today's topic, we really could have titled it a few different things. It could have been 10 signs you need new mats. It could have been 10 anti-fatigue mat warning signs. It could have even been 10 anti-fatigue mat inspection tips. Um, so we went with what we want, what we have on the screen here, but really the goal is to give you some tools that are going to help you evaluate and then diagnose your mats with confidence so you can make the right decisions going forward. Um, as soon as this session is over, we are going to share a printable mat inspection checklist, uh, which is what we would use during safety inspections. And you're welcome to use that and incorporate that into your own uh, safety programs as well. With that, we're going to dive right into our topic for today. So what's the goal with anti-fatigue mats? Important question. And why do we use them? So anti-fatigue mats are designed to achieve two things. And that is, number one, to provide long-term comfort that prevents ergonomic injuries. And then the second reason is to reduce recordable slip, trip, and fall injuries. So it shouldn't be that your mats are doing one or the other of these things. They should do both. And if your mats are not achieving um, these two outcomes together, then we feel there's something wrong, something is missing. And there's a good chance that what we're going to cover in these uh, next 10 slides are going to be some of the warning signs that are causing that to be a reality for you where you're only getting one of these outcomes. So <clears throat> as we get through to the end today, our goal is that you'll have some tools that you can use to help make sure that both of these outcomes are true for you and your facilities. Step number one, eroded surfaces. So every anti-fatigue mat is designed with a surface that's um, meant for traction to prevent slipping, things like that. But mats do erode, they can erode um, from heavy use. It might be from liquid or chemical exposure. And once that happens, your traction is gone and you really are increasing the risk of slipping and tripping. So as you can see from the picture, erosion is real. Um, it does happen. And there's a, real, there's a key to it here that we wanna just to point out. And that is to look closely at the spec sheets of the mats that you're considering, or maybe the mats that you have in place now. So there may be some fancy names for the mats you're using. Um, obviously a lot of names out there, but it doesn't really matter what the name of the mat is. What really matters is the composition. So if you drill into it and understand how the mats are made, what, um, what materials are used to build those mats, um, you'll see things like PVC, foam, nitrile blends, things like that. And those can be prone to absorb. They can be prone to abrasion. Um, I actually had a, a client recently just ask me this this very question: If um, you know, if he gets the mats, will the will the surface wear off after a short amount of time? And that shouldn't be the case. Um, but just look closely at the composition of the material that you're considering or the material that you have now. Obviously, a closed cell versus open cell, molded versus extruded. Um, they all have their um, benefits, and you just want to understand what each one is. Um, the second thing to look out for is mats that are flipped upside down. Believe it or not, it happens more than you might think. Um, oftentimes, we'll see that as we're doing assessments and walkthroughs that a mat has been flipped upside down. We surveyed throughout last year, we surveyed a handful of um, or a lot of safety and production leaders and learned about what their anti-fatigue mat pain points are. You'll see here 28% of those say that they've noticed mats have been flipped upside down. So it is a it is a challenge. And this happens for two reasons. It could be the lack of comfort or the operators feel that you know the fresh side by turning it over is going to somehow improve the performance of the mat. It could be that the top side is eroded or shredded and maybe even becoming dangerous for them. And so anytime you see this, it really is a clear sign that your operators, your people are uncomfortable with that mat and it's not performing like it should. And they flipped it out over just to try and get it maybe a little more life out of it. Certainly creates a clear trip hazard when that happens. Obviously the bevel is only designed to go one way and you're raising that off the floor and creating some sort of trip hazard when, when that happens. Number three is standing on the edge or even on and off of a mat. So again, back to our survey results, 35% of these uh, folks say that the number one complaint they receive from their employees is that they're either too small or it's the wrong shape. So 
you've heard me say it before, I'll say it again, but the best mat is worthless if it doesn't fit the work area properly. Um, a mat that somebody is on and off all day is super uncomfortable. If you've ever had that experience, I can tell you it's not a pleasant one. Um, so we want to make sure that we're eliminating that by getting mats that are made to the correct shape and size for the work area. So as we can see, we got a couple of great quotes here from some ergonomists that are helping us out. So Mike says standing with only half the foot in contact with the mat promotes a non-neutral ankle posture similar to standing on high heels. The non-neutral posture can result in MSD injury. And then Mary, she says that edge standing changes the biomechanics of the ankle, increases instability and leg low back fatigue. So those are some great examples there of why a, a mat that is too small can be a concern, um, even leading into those MSD injuries. And this is exactly the reason that we're so passionate about making custom mats really as easy as a standard size. So designing mats to fit the work area can certainly eliminate the constant on and off and the edge standing, the half standing half on, half off, things like that. You can see some great examples here in the um, in the pictures of what a transformation can look like when you get a one piece custom mat that eliminates the need for people to be on and off throughout their work day. Number four is about mats sliding around. So highly common it happens for a number of reasons. It could be the materials, the design, the installation, or even a combination of all three things. So as you can see, the top photo, these mats clearly not designed to fit the area. They've been hand cut. They're piled up on top of each other. They're overlapping. There's not really any way to keep them in place there. So as you can see, that certainly creates a lot of issues in that particular workspace for those operators. Um, a custom mat that replaced that, designed to fit the workstation, fits like a glove, 100% nitrile. It's going to stay in place, not only because of the um, design of the mat, but also the material that it's used from. So couple of tips to look out for when you're thinking about this and if this is an issue for you, mats sliding around. Um, look out for things like the NFSI high traction certification that can certainly help. Um, also look for an opportunity to redesign the mats um, for that area to create that glove-like fit. And then potentially you could add a non-slip backing uh, like the Grip Coat product. And that's gonna help as well, especially um, smaller mats that are on a super smooth surface. Sometimes those just are, are difficult to keep in place, but the grip coat can really overcome that and keep those mats from moving and keep your operators from having that potential skateboard effect of the mat sliding out. So number five, we're gonna talk here about curling borders. Curling is the most common safety hazard with anti-fatigue mats. I, I'm sure all of us have experienced it. We've witnessed it and we've seen the effects of what that can do in our facilities. 50% um, of anti-fatigue mat users are dealing with this issue. So it is up there. Um, it is a very common one. And how can you prevent that? A couple of things to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Confirm the right materials for the environment. Oftentimes oils, coolants, things like that react with the materials in a negative way and create that curling. You can look closely at the design. Is it a two-piece? Does it have a waterfall edge um, in which it's prone to curl? You can review the mat warranty. That's something we definitely recommend. Um, make sure that you are observing what is covered in the warranty. Curling, in fact, is so common that you'll rarely find it is covered in warranties. Um, it's kind of considered a wear and tear issue, um, but we've spent 15 years honing our design and our materials to be able to guarantee that our mats will never curl. And we actually warranty that as well. So dig into the warranty. You'll also want to ask, ask your suppliers, ask your um, employees. They can give you a lot of great feedback as well as to what has worked and not worked in, in the past in their facilities. So always ask the questions. You never go wrong by asking and digging deep into those questions. And then lastly, uh, do a trial of a mat you're considering and make sure that that trial is done out in your production area. We sometimes have people that will test a mat in an office environment and 
sure you may be able to understand what it's like to stand on it in that um, situation but what you're not getting is how is this mat going to hold up to the environment that it's placed in how are the operators going to accept um, a new mat like this one so make sure it's out in production the bigger the sample the better um, and you'll get more real feedback that way than just testing it in an office environment number six uh, we're going to talk here about mats being stacked up another highly common issue so 46 percent of those that completed the survey noticed that that is true for them in their facilities. Some great pictures here to explain what we're talking about. Um, it is obviously a health and safety hazard. And it's also a sign that your employees aren't getting the comfort they need out of their mats. So make sure that this gets addressed. Um, you'll notice here another quote from Mary. Great quote here, stacked mats may seem to have more cushion. In reality, it creates postural instability like standing in high heels for hours each day, increasing the risk of rolled ankles and MSD injuries. So back to that same concept here about the high heels coming up again, but we just wanna make sure these don't happen. And one way um, I think is important as safety leaders and um, those that are helping to overcome these issues in the facilities, as new mats are deployed, uh, really important that we're getting out there and we're making sure the old ones are discarded or disposed of or moved out of the way and the new mats are put down fresh and clean um, to prevent this happening. You can see in the picture on the left, classic case, a new mat came in, the old mat just gets left there and you just throw the new one on top. And that's always going to create issues. It's always going to create those safety concerns. So you want to just be vigilant with that and make sure it's not happening as you deploy the mats. Take the time um, to make sure they're deployed successfully. Uh, number seven, we're looking here at compressed or flat mats. So what we're talking about here is when an anti-fatigue mat loses its cushion. It does happen. Um, so PVC foam, PVC nitrile blends, they do tend to go flat over time. They lose their cushion. Something like the 100% nitrile is never going to do that. So Go back to the specs of the mat that you've got, understand maybe the life expectancy, uh, what, how long is this mat supposed to last in my environment, and you'll understand then what's happening here. So <clears throat> I'm sure we've all had that experience of standing on a mat, and it really isn't much different than standing on the cement. And that obviously is a point where the mat has lost its cushion. So <clears throat> what it leads to, people will start stacking them, they'll start piling up, they'll start adding more mats on top of each other um, to try and gain a little extra anti-fatigue support there. So be aware of this one. And if you start seeing some of those telltale signs, it's probably true that your, your mats have gone flat and they're ready to replace. Number eight is when you start seeing mats getting pieced together. So 40% of the leaders we surveyed say that their number one challenge with Ergo mats is having to place together rectangles to cover a complex layout. So back to our custom being simple and standard, um, that is super important to ensure that we don't have this issue of um, gaps overlapping, constantly stepping on and off, trying to watch where your, where your feet are. Um, there's a great story behind these pictures here um, that kind of explains why custom mats are found foundational for us. Uh, the picture on the left, is what the environment looked like before we were in, involved. And an employee actually had an ankle injury here at this facility um, by having a trip accident over a mat that was overlapping another one. And so what we were able to do then is come in, remove all those ones that were overlapping and causing those safety hazards and replace it with what you see on the right, a one piece custom design that's perfectly fit for the work area. Um, totally eliminating any trip and fall hazards. Number nine is about tile seams coming apart. So you may be familiar with modular tiles. They have a, um, you know, they have a great, a great use in certain applications where you're maybe needing to reconfigure layouts often, things like that. Uh, there's a couple of challenges with tile systems. Um, one is that Either they're a hard plastic type of material that doesn't provide a, a sufficient amount of anti-fatigue support, um, or else the 
they have the challenge of the seams coming apart, or maybe it's both of those things are, are true. So it's only going to get worse with time. It can happen because there's a whole lot of seams, you know, chemicals, particles, machine waste, things like that can start working their way down into those seams and pulling them apart, creating a trip hazard. So you'll, you'll see that happening. And then if that does happen, it's certainly time to, Think about switching to a one-piece custom design like you see here in this in this example. Um, you can eliminate a lot of seams. You can eliminate any potential of those pulling apart and becoming a, a trip hazard. And lastly is absenteeism being high. So it's more of a call to action here. Absenteeism in manufacturing is higher than in most other industries um, and is often a result of MSD injuries, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And the other point we're calling out here is that um, MSDs are expected to double by 2050, certainly an alarming statistic there. So what, what can we do to eliminate that? Um, in brief, your work environment is either working for your people or against your people. And we believe that the right MAT strategy will help achieve the two outcomes that we discussed at the beginning. Um, the ergonomic support that is required to keep these people coming back to work, keep them safe, keep them comfortable whilst they're there. And then the outcome of reducing the slip, trip and fall hazards. So by acknowledging these 10 points and understanding the impacts they have, and then seeing how you can overcome some of those will certainly help on the path to ensuring you have these two outcomes achieved in your facility. So take the time to inspect your mats, identify the states that they're in, and make sure that they are working for you. And I'll follow that up as well with saying that you want to make sure that you're also taking action. So as you inspect your facility, if you come up with some areas that need improvement, your employees are going to know about that. And you, you want to make sure you're following that up. Um, and you're you're acting on it. It may not be all at once, but your employees will certainly appreciate it if they know what the outcomes are, what the course of action is going to be taken to correct these kind of issues.